It's a bit late, but here it is finally, our top 5 indie games for May 2016. We'll be getting to them soon, but just before we do, let's get some news and then some honourable mentions. The much anticipated No Man's Sky has been delayed by two months, and will now release in August. The news prompted some fans to lob death threats the way of developer Sean Murray and Kotaku journalist Jason Sherlock who broke the story. In more pleasant news, the perennially denied Mighty No. 9 will be available June 21 in North America and June 24 everywhere else. The Banner Saga 2 will come to both the PS4 and Xbox One on July 26th. The game launched on PC last month. Lastly, Ed McMillan, creator of Super Meat Boy and The Binding of Isaac, has announced his next game, The Legend of Bumbo. To quote McMillan, the game will be a turn-based puzzle RPG type thingy that's randomly generated. We have no release date yet, but rumour has it that Bumbo could be a prequel to Isaac. Pitfall Planet was nominated for the best student game at the IGF Awards back in March. It's a really fun and colourful puzzle platformer that only supports local co-op, so you can't play it alone. It's been a long time coming, but rhythm-based runner Melody's Escape has made it to full release. Choose your favourite song and move to the beat. Glitch Space lets you solve problems by reprogramming its beautiful cyberspace world. Lasts for about 3 hours and is more about logical systems and sorting through messy code. Last Fight is a love letter to Capcom's 3D arena fighting game Power Stone. It looks fantastic, and all 10 of its playable fighters are based off of French comic book Last Man. The maitre d' is Aludum Dariabit from Powerhoof, the geniuses behind Crawl. This funny little platformer has you shapeshift over sparks to see your patrons to their seats. It's also free to play. Looking like Drift Stage Cross with Thumper, Neon Drive is a rhythm based joyride. Follow the beat to change lanes as you travel through seven arcade style levels and their breathtaking views. From slick cityscapes to ocean roads with a setting sun, there is much beauty to behold from the seat of your car. But that's not all. The game takes you off wheels and straps you into a charging mech and a fighter plane up in the sky. Also, as your ears already know, the music in Neon Drive is fire and leaking 80s nostalgia all over the place. This is one sexy game that's perfect for chilling out to. The Way is an homage to Eric Chahi and the platformers he created in the 90s, including Another World and Heart of Darkness. Much like those older titles, The Way puts you in an unfriendly and dangerous alien world. It's full of run for your life moments and challenging platforming. In terms of differences, there's a greater focus on puzzles that are just as hard as the rest of the game, and the game itself is much longer. The Way takes at least 10 hours to complete. Its pixel graphics are reminiscent of another world, and are just as effective of capturing the mood of the game's world. The music is also effective, reinforcing the emotion of the protagonist's journey to find his lost love. The Way is a terrific return to the past that will challenge you with its gameplay and engross you within its world and story. If there are any survivors out there listening, please respond. I'm dangerously low on supplies, but I've repurposed some salvage drones to explore all these derelict ships and gather what I can from them. Lurking in early access for the past year, Duskers has finally risen to the surface with a full release. Its visuals may not be striking at first, but they are key to the isolated and terrifying experience being crafted for the player. A lone survivor in a seemingly endless graveyard, all you have is an interface through which to remotely control drones. Leading these drones through ruined ships, you find out you're not alone. These horrors may only appear as dots on a screen, but the suspense they create causes much sweating and muscle tensing. The game itself is one of the more unforgiving roguelikes the genre has to offer. For instance, drones are always in need of fuel or parts so as to upgrade, but finding these resources often means poking around in new areas and awakening greater dangers. Basically, problems don't get solved, but compound until they reach boiling point. 
Duskers also uses text commands like the early roguelikes of the 80s, something that we millennials found quite fascinating. Duskers is a hidden gem lurking in the depths of the Steam store waiting to be found. This world has known war for centuries, but peace is finally preciously near. We set out on the ocean. We totally blanked and forgot to add Sultan Sanctuary to our March video, but since it came out on PC this month, we thought it'd be a good opportunity to put things right. The game is a 2D Metroidvania, but its largest influence is Dark Souls. The checkpoint system is the same, and the death is just as constant and crushing. Beyond specific mechanics, the greatest similarity between the two games is the level of depth. Whether it be the class system, the weapons, the crafting, or the world itself, Sultan Sanctuary has so much to explore and uncover. Sultan Sanctuary is bloody difficult, and considering the affordable price tag, all Dark Souls fans should owe it to themselves to try it out. Push Me Pull You is simple, quirky and gimmicky, but it's also the most fun local co-op game we've played since Gang Beasts. What looks like a pair of nudist couples trying to recreate a human snail pastry is actually two super elastic human worms jostling over some balls in a heated battle. The winner is the team that can wrestle the ball into their half of the circle the longest. As we said, it's pretty simple. But what makes Push Me Pull You so great is the experience of playing with others in the same room. The competition of it all turns every match into a crazy scream fest, whilst the grotesquely hilarious sound effects ensures a constant stream of laughter. Games can be tackled via a 1v1 scenario where a player controls a sausage each, or in a 2v2 situation where each player gets one head. It's only out on PS4 at the moment, but Push Me Pull You will hit PC this July. Thanks for watching, my name's Josh, and we'll see you next time here on Indieformer. <laughs>